a bit longer video today um, because there was quite a bit to fit in. Um, I'd be interested to know what you think about the speeded up sequences that I've included this time. Cheers. Hi again, a um, bit of a change today. Um, I'm at Rookery Waters, which I have fished before, and I fished it last year and didn't have a very good day in, in many respects. <laughs> but I'm back today just to give you a change. Um, I'm on the Magpie Lake, which I rather like. It's the one with probably more features than most of the others. Um, fair number of people here today, so. Um, Perhaps need to be a little bit quiet with my chatting. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm tackled up and all ready to go. Uh, I'm led to believe there's some very good roach in here, but there are also a lot of carp, so um, remains to be seen what happens. But as I say, just a change of venue for you. And um, field 10 was perhaps getting a bit boring, so although difficult but boring. Anyway, um, let's get going, see how we do today. Uh, arrived a bit late actually, it's just gone 11 o'clock, so um, yeah, <laughs> I have a difficulty getting out sometimes. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, get, let's get going. Okay, um, I've put a few maggots down just at the edge of the reeds here to try some um, margin fishing. I don't know if that will work here, obviously. Um, in, in the, later in the year there are big beds of lilies here which, get, which give you a feature to fish to but at the moment there's not much at all but you can see that I'm not particularly deep and that, that is on the bottom so um, yeah we'll see how we go um, as I said in the intro I came here last year and I, I fished what's called the Rook Lake which is the big fish lake if you like this this is more of a match lake but it's it's pretty featureless the Rook Lake um, it's just a big circle with pitches every few yards and um, if you went back and look at that video you see um, I was suffering a bit at the time with my with my hip and um, I, I tried margin fishing there and it was a total disaster, didn't catch a thing, didn't have a bite. Oh, there's a bite, oh, straight away and I lost it. Well, that's a bit unfortunate. Um, yeah, um, and then to crown it all uh, a couple of guys turned up next to me when I was there at the Rook Lake and they made a terrible racket. They were chatting all day and on the phone all day and um, anyway, this is quite peaceable at the moment, so um, we live in hopes. I think I probably struck too quickly on that first bite. Let's hope I haven't spooked them. a bit better I think. When I plumbed up, I plumbed up where I'm fishing obviously and I also plumbed up about um, the same distance again out and um, it wasn't much deeper actually. So I don't know if there's a shelf here in the middle channel, I'm not quite sure. Obviously it's a it's a manufactured lake so it probably does have shelves around the, um, around the outside and um, a deeper section in the middle. It's supposed to hold quite good carp, as well as a fairly big population of um, smaller carp. I've caught smaller carp here in the past. Um, but it's also, as I think I mentioned, um, supposed to hold some very good roach. But how one gets to the good roach in, between, in, uh, in among all the other things um, is always the big challenge. Yeah, I think I think pricking that first fish wasn't a good move. 
Oh well. There's plenty of fish in here. I'm sure they will um, they'll probably come back again. There's something interested with this. It's just tweaking the float rather than... I'm sure it's moving across. Oh, I don't know. And I think my um, hook length is a bit doubled up on itself. Oh no. It's a nice little spot this. You, you know, feeling quite positive about it really. And as I say, although there's quite a few people here, it's nice and peaceful. Okay, you missed the bite and um, getting it in, but it, it is um, a roach. So, um, I thought that might be giving me the delicate bites. Actually, I say you missed the um, you missed the bite, but I've actually got my other camcorder going, so there's a there's a possibility. God, oh, you're a slippery for character. I need my discorder, and I never got it out again. Oh, there we go. <coughs> Right, so there's roach down there, folks. Let's um, see if we can get some more. I actually went a little bit um, shallower with the float, only about an inch, because I was picking up debris off the bottom every time I retrieved. So, um, so if I just went about an inch shallower, perhaps it would keep the maggots out of the, out of the rubbish. Um, I should go down to a smaller hook, really. It's a 14 that I had on from Fields End, but we're slow as we are for the moment. and um, see what happens. Because these bites are so tensitive, and I had a 14 hook on, um, I'm going to go down in size, and um, I went to the tackle shop the other day and bought some um, these Drennan ready-tied hooks. Now I've got 18s there, but that's two pound line, and I think that might be a bit risky. But this this range here, the hooks are actually coloured red. They're, they're actually um, Call it carp maggot, the, um, the hook. This is 16. I'll go for this, and it's three and a half pound, which is a bit more um, a bit more resilient than two pound. I think two pound right next to the reeds here, if I get a carp, will be the end of everything. But um, So I'm going to try one of these new hooks. Drennan hand-tied hook links, carp maggot, barbless 16, three and a half pound, 0.14 millimeter for the people who like it that way. So, um, I've just taken the other one off, I'll just put this on, I won't, I won't keep you on while I'm messing about and then we'll see if um, using a red hook with red maggots and scaling down from a 14 to a 16 does any good. Well I just um, hooked into something sizeable. Um, it didn't stay on for more than about 10 seconds, it was heading for the middle of the, middle of the lake. Um, I'm not 100% sure whether it was a 
copper bite or a lime bite. I've been getting some peculiar movements on the float. There's a lot of carp moving around down here. You can see it in the reeds and you can um, you can see them on the surface. So whether it was a foul hook carp and it just came away. But the um, having lost the, the fish, which was bad enough, then the um, line and float and everything came flying back once the fish sort of got off straight into the reeds. Um, lost my hook length, my brand new red hook, that's gone. <laughs> but pulling out of the reeds the line came zinging back again and um, ended up in one almighty tangle. How a fishing line manages that I really don't know. But... So it took me about 10 minutes to unpick the tangle and then um, obviously put another, another new hook on. <laughs> yeah. So we're back, we're back fishing again after about a quarter of an hour um, hiatus. Still getting these little bobs and things that don't come to anything. But, well, I'm definitely into something now. Just trying to get in the reeds. It's just a small carp, but it's having a go. I knew they were down there, I've been knocking around in the reeds. Pucky little things, aren't they? It's almost like a cushion, but I can't believe it is. And there, it's just a small. like a crucian doesn't it? I didn't even know there were crucians in here to be honest let's get rid of this hook that might account for the um, dodgy bites or the difficult bites because crucians are notoriously um, tricky things to hook yeah. I'm not sure really it's probably a hybrid, isn't it? It's not a pure crucian. It's either a hybrid or a, or a small carp. I'm not sure. I'm not good enough on carp to... Um... But anyway, a bit of fun. A bit of fun. Well, how's that for a monster perch? <laughs> it was giving me a fidgety little bite. And um, yeah, it's a sort of aquarium-sized perch, isn't it, really? When I was a kid I did take a perch home once and kept it in the aquarium and um, it was a bit naughty really but I was a kid. And it lived for a long time. I used to feed it maggots because obviously I went fishing so I fed it maggots. And um, did he go in? Yeah, I think he went in. Yeah. And um, it was a bit sad really because in the aquarium I had a big shell just for a, you know, feature, as they say. And I come home one day, and the perch had got his head in the shell. And of course, with the spiny dorsal, was unable to get out. And it was dead. A very sad day for me, that was. I'd kept that perch alive for a long time. I'm not having a very good hook day. <laughs> I um, just lost my second hook in the um, reeds over there after striking a bite and trying to stop the float going into the left hand reeds and I sort of overcompensated and um, ended up in the right hand reeds I can still see my maggots calling up the reed over there with the hooks attached no doubt but then just to crown it all the, these are delicate little hooks on very fine nylon and um, as I say to crown it all, crown it all I got a new one out and dropped it <laughs> and um, despite putting my um, close-up glasses on and getting on my hands and knees and carefully sort of scraping my hands over the surface of the ground um, no couldn't find it so now this is this is the fourth hook out of my um, eight that I bought so a bit expensive really it's about one, one pound fifties worth of hooks so far, I think, or something like that. 
it's one o'clock, so I've been here a couple of hours. I've had one roach, one small carp, and I had another minuscule perch, which I've come to the conclusion was what, or what are causing the um, finickety little bites. I just can't get the maggots in their mouth. So, we're trying a worm now. See if there's any grown up perch down there. Mind you, I say grown up perch, little ones are, have been known to um, attack worms almost as big as themselves. Uh, still a lot of carp movement. Um, reeds are knocking. Oh. oh, well, this feels a bit better on a worm. Yeah, it definitely feels a bit better on a worm. I don't know what we got, but it's powering out there. I don't think it's a perch. Oh. It looks like it might be a good roach. Surely not. Be good if it is. Oh no, it's um, it's a little carp. Oh, the carp obviously like worms. Yes. Similar to the last one, it's a bit bigger. Yeah, wait, steady one, steady one. They're lovely little fish, aren't they? Very muscular. Yeah. Not too much lip damage, are they? Hopefully, haven't been dragged out too many times. Um, yeah, lovely gold colour. I'll have to try another worm, I think. Well, there's proof of my theory. Um, I said I think the dodgy little bites were perched, tugging on the worm, but not being able to swallow it. So, um, in this case, I managed to hook it. But I, um, I think with all these little fellas in the swim, I'm going to be lucky to get anything else, to be honest, on maggots or worms. I tried corn, and that didn't really produce anything. But these are diddy little bit fellas, aren't they? They're beautiful, but, but they are really um, about as small as you could hope to catch on organ line, I think. Mm. Oh well. Say la vie. They're getting a bit bigger. <laughs> but still, um, still pretty small. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where's mum and dad, eh? Right, we'll persevere. Mm. I think I may have got into something decent. Um, whether it was another foul hook job, but it was, a, it was the same sort of bite, but this one has really powered off. This is almost certainly a carp. That was on worm. 
and they had all the fiddly bites on them from the perch and then suddenly whoosh I'm really on three and a half pound line so I can't go mad this rods a bit um, unlike my match rod it doesn't give as much protection to the line yeah, it keeps going in the blooming reeds down there I'll get it out Fortunately these reeds are I think in planters, they're not like at Fields End where they're actually um, actually a refuge for the fish. Yeah, it's off again. Yeah. It's a bit bigger than the other cart we had earlier on. I haven't seen it yet, so I haven't got a clue what it looks like. It's right under my feet now. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh yeah. I think I might have foul hooked it. The way it's sort of um, positioned in the water. Which would explain why it's taking so much um, effort to get in. They can't get their heads up when they're foul hooked. I think it's in the um, one of the bottom fins. See it that's in the in the fin there. The hook's coming up and um, the line's still through the fin. Chaotic situation. Right, okay. That's what's happened, it's gone through. There we go. There we go. Okay, mate. It's a nice fish, actually. trying to show you to the audience. I just picked up a roach on maggot which is a bit encouraging because I thought all we were going to get were perch. So um, yeah. roach here. Nice condition. Well, I don't know if this is a foul hook one again or what but it's gone powering off. Screaming to the middle of the lake. Probably is. It's trouble. You swim over your bait and you get. In the interests of keeping this video at a reasonable length, I've sped up uh, parts of the. Uh, sections where I'm playing the larger carp 
as each time it was taking about four or five minutes. So you're still seeing all the action, but you're seeing it four times faster than it actually happened in practice. So this is the first of um, the sections and there are uh, a few more to follow. Yeah, it's a nice fish, isn't it? Yeah, fairly hooked in the mouth. I definitely should have bought my bigger landing net today. Just on there. Okay. Oh, that's quite a nice fish, isn't it? I won't mess about holding it up. I'm bound to drop it. I think you can see it pretty well there. All right, we'll just give you a rest and we'll um, perhaps just see what you weigh. Well, it was just over five pound that fish. I thought it was, um, oh my God, I've got another one on straight away. They've really started feeding, haven't they? This is amazing. I didn't really come here for a carp session, but that's what I've ended up having. Oh, literally, I've literally just cast back in after after putting that fish back. Three maggots again. come on the feed. Ah, it's come off. Come off. Oh well. Can't win them all. Well, I'm not sure what this is. <laughs> Whether it's um, yeah, it's a crucian. They have a crucian look about them, but I don't think they are crucians. Mucky river. Hmm. I forgot to turn the video on when I was playing it, so you missed that. But it was on maggots again. Um, yeah, I was off asleep and I just, I hooked it and I thought, I thought it was bigger than it was actually. It gave me a right hole to do. It got all caught up in all the reeds down, the dead reeds on the surface. But, um, in the chunky things. Really bald. Come here, come here. It's a really sort of bald fish. It looks like a crucian, but... Uh, I don't know. Maybe not. Anyway, we'll put it back. Definitely something around that float. But I'm sure that float is now moving laterally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're fiddly little bites and you think they're going to be tiddlers and when you strike they're, um, they're not. That is definitely a cushion that has all the um, colouring of a cushion. It looks quite a nice cushion as well. That explains the 
That explains the bites really, because they're notorious crucian for being difficult to hit. And, uh, oh, let's take it gently, I don't really want to lose this, this one. I haven't caught many crucians for years. I'd like to get this one in. Yeah, it's a nice looking fish. Oh, would you believe it? The battery's just about to expire on my um, cam, on my head cam. I've got a power pack which I'll put in place, but let's get this fish sorted out. Oh, that is lovely. That is a lovely fish. That is definitely a crucian, there's no two ways about that. And it's taking it down a bit, unfortunately. Uh, this video is going to cut out any minute now, so apologies for that. But can't do much. Can't do much about it really. Yeah, that is lovely. That is lovely. Made the day that has absolutely beautiful. Please charge it in time. Yeah, okay, I can hear you giving me little messages. But, um, yeah, beautiful. Perhaps I'll just take a picture in front of the other camera just in case this thing is actually packed up. I'll turn this one off for a minute. The Crucian was one and a half pound which is a lovely fish really. Um, as I say, if there's some more of those down there, I'll be more than happy. I'd rather be catching them than battling it out with the big carp at the moment. I love the Crucian carp, they're beautiful fish. It was interesting to see that compared with the earlier fish I caught that looked Crucian-y, but there was really no comparison, was there? I'm sure this is a Crucian. <laughs> if it is, it's the record. <laughs> oh dear, let's hope this one stays on. I think we've got a mix down there of roach, bigger carp, Crucians. I think there's a lot of down there, to be honest. I mustn't muscle this too much. With my match rod, it's very... Um, it's very forgiving on the line because it absorbs nearly all the lunges but this rod is um, this rod's not quite as forgiving I have to be a bit more careful um, I don't think I mentioned it earlier but it's the six section Grace Prodigy rover float rover so being in six sections um, I find it quite amazing it performs as it does being a six section rod to be honest but it obviously gives it a bit more stiffness than perhaps would be the case in a two section rod. It's 12 foot, so uh, yeah. I'm not sure this one isn't foul hooked again, which is what's causing all the bother. Yeah, it's foul hooked again, isn't it? Mm. That is the trouble when they get foul hooked. You've got no control over them, really. Oh, I don't know, no, no, it's in the mouth. It was just the line wrapped around it. Oh. Tell a lie, it's not foul hooked. Oh, Jesus. I've got these reeds in the blemmy my bits of log and. Oh, Christ almighty. Talk about making life difficult. Yeah, it's not particularly big, is it? But it gives a good account of itself. Just leave it in there for a while to recover a bit. 
Can you see that hook? Look at it, right in the edge, little tiny 16 hook. Right in the edge of the lip. Yeah, quite lucky that one didn't come off as well. Well, not massive, but you um, you certainly made yourself awkward, didn't you? Getting into all the stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, let's put you back. to something <laughs> significant again. Yeah, it's amazing. Didn't expect this here today, I must admit. I was just hoping for some roach and... Um, well, I didn't really know to be honest because um, the only things I've ever caught from here before were smallish carp. Um, so this is all a bit of a surprise today. Making a right mess of my swim though. Ah, there you go. If I can keep your hair out just for long enough. One really, about the same, aren't they? I think the hook's just in the um, just in the mouth again. There we go. Yeah, another little bruiser. Yeah, okay, okay, you're going back, you're going back. Just stop spraying me with water. You're going back. Yeah, okay. Off you go. There you go. Right. Well, I'm into something again. It's gone scooting off to the centre of the lake. I think I better stand up for these fish because I've got to try and keep them out of this corner here. And it's going around the side of the reed, isn't it? Ah, oh dear. This is not good. Not good.
This one looks quite good. I must bring a bigger landing net next time I come here. Completely underestimated the um, size of fish. Give in, do they? Oops, you fell off the chair then. That would have been fun. just big enough. <sighs> Keep getting the maggots and not the hook. Ah, there we go. Bingo. Right, okay. Oh. I don't think I'm going to try and hold you up because you're far too flipping lively. You are unbelievably lively. No, I think. We... Nah. Also, very slimy. All right, there we go. Let people see you. Okay. All right, let's put you back in, shall we? Oh well, I think a couple more casts. It's um. Quarter past four. I think I've had a good day today. I don't think I need... Oh, look at that. It's going away straight away. They seem to go mad here after three o'clock. Mind you, that's probably true of anywhere else. Well, it was a good bite, but <laughs> nothing on the end of it. As I say, the trouble here is it's alternating between Diddy Perch, Roach, and the occasional carp. You never know what it's going to be when that float goes under. I do love float fishing. I think the anticipation of that float going under is um, beats anything else really. was quite a lot of disturbance that last one so oh no here we go oh no it's another carp this is unbelievable one after another I don't know if it's the fact I've been feeding maggots all day or the fact they just come alive at this point in the day, I don't know. Interesting, all these bays with the um, AstroTurf have got numbers on, but this hasn't got a number on. I'm beginning to think I'm fishing out of bounds here. 
I don't suppose it matters too much. God, how they try hard to get him the reach. I think he's just about burnt himself out now. It's still going to make a lot of fuss though. Jesus Christ. They are really lively. Well, that's it for today. It turned out to be a bit of a surprise, really. Um, as I mentioned, the last time I came to Rookery Waters, I had a very disappointing day, but today was really great. Um, I didn't expect the carp. I was, I was hoping for some roach and um, perhaps perch and, you know. But um, yeah, the carp came as a bit of a surprise. Uh, but the crucian carp, the one and a half pound crucian carp was for me the fish of the day. Lovely, beautiful fish. Um, yeah, I think, what did I have, three carp, four, I've forgotten now, and I, I had three fish come off, I, I assume they were all carp, but um, yeah, so that's it for today, um, as usual, thanks for watching. Um, I notice on all the other videos I watch on YouTube, the, um, the people say, uh, please, please like this video and please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, I, <laughs> I don't usually do that, because I just assume if people want to do that, they'll do it, but... Um, just to be in line with everybody else, I'll say that today. So, thanks again, and as always, until the next time, cheers.